Maybe an equalizer already showed Bigfoot who's boss. This week on Tough Track, the new Bigfoot gets another shot at David Morris in Memphis, Tennessee. But first, Bigfoot has his hands full with the Grave Digger. The modified tractor, three and four engines strong, takes to the clay in the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia. Don't miss the war this week on Tough Track. Hi again, everyone. I'm Scott Douglas. The TNT Monster Trucks for the second week in a row are at the Mid-South Coliseum in Memphis, Tennessee. We've got some great racing action with the superstars of the TNT Monster Truck Challenge coming at you right here on Tough Tracks. All the top dogs ready to go at it today, including the outlaw with his beautiful new paint job, Nick Rossi's truck, and Mike Wine driving it. They're looking great so far in 1990 on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. We'll see just how good they are today in Memphis, Tennessee. Army Armstrong's ready to set us up for a great round of racing in the Mid South Coliseum. All the people in Memphis, Tennessee got to see the new Bigfoot, and believe me, they were not disappointing. Cutting times down to three and a half seconds. Andy, if any truck ever had the field covered, it was you until you went to the final round. Can you tell us what happened? Well, that's right. The Ford General Tire Bigfoot was running real well tonight. We got all the way into the finals. I pushed it a little bit too hard, come down, landed on all fours. It just bit, bit real well, and then busted the transmission. So the trans, everything else is okay. The new chassis works. Yes, it does. It's been working real well, you know. We monitoring our shock travel tonight, you know, maybe make a little bit of an adjustment for the next week, you know, just the pressure and the shocks and stuff like that. But we'll be back. Believe me, we'll be watching. A lot of people glad to have you back on tour, and I'm one of them. Yeah, so am I. We're going to take a look at the winner from a week ago in the Mid-South Coliseum, qualifying this week on Tough Tracks. That's the Equalizer. But we'll get a real indication of what things are going to do today as he qualifies against Gary Porter's Carolina Crusher. David Morris and the Equalizer to qualify against Porter here. Scott, this could be a real indication of what we're going to be seeing later. Morris and Thomas, he will not run the truck that hard in qualifying. Thank you for the final, but look at this. Under four seconds of 392. That's quick. Not running it hard, but running it effectively. Dave Wysorek and the Nightlife Chevrolet will square off with Bigfoot. Not an elimination race once again. This is the set of qualifying time. Bigfoot 8, Andy Brass from St. Louis, Missouri, running against the Chevrolet out of Nebraska, seeing who can set a better time, and if Bigfoot can get under equalizer. That's the question here. You've got to remember, a 392, what they do, they go over a four-foot high hill, right where they're setting now, right after they're starting on. Then over 12 cars got in under four seconds. Look at this, Bigfoot comes out like a rocket. Andy Brass and Bigfoot... 3.85, 700 faster than the time posted by Equalizer. Let's take a look at how things will shake down in the first round. These are the pairings. Bigfoot, fast qualifier, gets a bye. Then the rivalry is renewed here in Memphis. Grave Digger against the Outlaw. Buffalo Tremor meets Mad Dog. Scott Stevens takes King Crunch out against the all-new Wild Hair and Starvin' Marvin Smith. Awesome Kong is back to take on Whiskey Business. USA 1 will meet playing for Keith. And rounding out that first round, it's the Carolina Crusher against Clyde Sale, and David Morris' equalizer will face the nightlife Chevrolet of Dave Wysore. Also today on Tough Tracks, we go to the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia, as we're going to look at the big tractors, the 7,200-pound modified tractor, Tim Engler, the defending national champion in the Mission Impossible, ready to pull against the best in the super modified tractors at the Omni in Atlanta, the big dogs of the sport, ready to hook and pull. Time now for the Restore Automotive Park Monster Truck Challenge points. Coming into this week's racing here on Tough Track, David Morris leading the way. The digger is number two. King Crunch settling into the third spot. Outlaw is fourth. USA 1 rounding out the top five. Then it's Nightlife in the sixth spot. Buffalo Tremor in seventh. Mopar Magic with Jerry Wiggins, number eight. Thunder Chicken and Kid Rarick, ninth. And Carolina Crusher with a late start on the season into the top ten at number ten. Tough Track is brought to you by Micro Machine, the most colossally collectible vehicle in the world. If it doesn't say Micro Machine, it's not the real thing. We'll be right back with the TNT Monster Truck Challenge on Tough Track. All the excitement of the major league in monster truck racing, TNT, coming at you here on Tough Track. Army Armstrong, one of the great rivalries of 1990, about to be renewed in Memphis. It's Grave Digger against the Outlaw. Well, Dennis Anderson has always represented Chevrolet and the awesome Grave Digger with the red lights. However, this rookie driver in 1989 represented.
representing the Ford cab developed a tremendous almost hatred for that Chevrolet they call the Gravedigger. No love lost between these two guys. Let's see who's going to have the first win of 1990. The drama comes up. We're looking for a green light. Oh, whole shot by the Ford. Oh, Scott Anderson comes back, but believe me, that Ford is going to make him remember that whole shot before tonight's over. Nonetheless, at the finish line, Dennis Anderson's Gravedigger gets the win. Red light blaring in Memphis, Tennessee. Give the win to the Gravedigger, and Army standing by with Dennis Anderson. Well, as we go around the country, this is one of the trucks that everybody wants to see. Dennis, looking good so far. What do you got to say? Yeah, it's looking pretty good so far, but we got a lot of tough competition here. All I can say is I got to try to knock them down. John Kwasniewski, Buffalo Trevor on a lack of one in New York, up in the Buffalo, New York area. We'll meet Mad Dog, now being driven by Bob Green out of Jefferson City, Missouri. John Green back in the shop, getting ready a brand new truck, a brand new micro machine is not too far off in the future with John Green driving. But Bob's now driving the Mad Dog. Here he goes against Trevor. It's gonna be New York Triple A going against the Missouri Triple A. New York gonna take the win. Both of those drivers are good, aren't they, Scott? Buffalo Tremor, John Kwasniewski, able to outgun Bob Green and the Mad Dog. Once again, you see him side by side, Army. Well, what it is, the Tremor out of New York has just a little bit bigger engine, about 512 cubic inches. That is definitely to his advantage. We're going to be taking a look now at King Crunch, the GMC out of Woodland, Texas, with Scott Stevens against the Wild Hair Chevrolet and Marvin Smith. We're going to listen to Scott Stevens' radio communication.
Truck Racing, battling on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. I'm Scott Douglas, again with Army Armstrong and Chris Chapman in Memphis, Tennessee. As you see Steve Kane and Awesome Kong, the opponent, Ken Deppy in Whiskey Business, calling out of Texas, Whiskey Business out of Missouri. You know, Ken Deppy's new on the circuit. A month ago, he was still in the military. Now he's overdriving the George Dickel Whiskey Business vehicle for the World Championship. He could be a, definitely a newcomer in the sport. Keep an eye on him. But look who he goes up against, that one tough next. Gets the victory. Steve Kane wins it rather convincingly over Whiskey Business. Kong will get a look on an isolated replay. Well, actually, on a replay with both of them, but coming right at you this time. Scott, you got to keep in mind, Awesome Kong made only one change for the 1990 season. But what a change. They teamed up with Jerry Janke to make our horsepower out of the great state of Texas for the Texas truck. Problems for Awesome Kong. The front drive line is the problem, and they're going to have to tow. Steve Kane's truck off. Jeff Dane owns that truck, and they'll be working fast and furious. Next matchup in the first round, number one, two years ago in the World Point Chase, USA won with Steve Wilkie driving for Everett Jasmer out of Minnesota, the True Value sponsored Chevrolet against Jesse Berge playing for Keith, the Auto Value sponsored Chevy out of Wyoming, Michigan. Scott, do not look for a hard race. I tell you why, Jesse Berge was involved in a tremendous highway accident just a few hours ago trying to get to the event. He just went to the line to try to get some points. USA won should advance. I'm calling it up front. That's what it looks like. Yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. And that's a good move by Jesse Berge because he doesn't know if that truck has really been damaged or not. The USA won. He does know that he's going to the next round. Steve Wilkie getting the victory as he is able to beat Jesse Berge. And once again, his Army called it. Berge just feeling the equipment out after his problem. Very slow off the starting line. It's an easy win for Steve Wilkie in USA 1. Continuing to gain more experience, Wilkie, now the driver of USA 1, works his way over to Army Armstrong. Well, Steve Wilkie's going in. Some big shoes to fill, but you look like you're just taking it one step at a time and doing a good job. It looked like an awfully smooth run out there, Steve. Well, wow, that's about it, Army. I, I can't fill Rod's shoes. All I can do is create some for my own. Uh, uh, True Value, Master Mechanic, uh, Chevrolet, Everett Jasmer, and all the guys in the shop, uh, I got to do something for them. Those are the shoes. It's amazing how many guys are behind you. We'll see you in that next round. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Army. Rod, of course, Rod Lipsdow, who drove USA 1 to the World Championship in 1988. Steve Wilkie used to be the crew chief on that truck. Lips out a little banged up from all the beating and banging he took in that truck, and now Wilkie the driver. Bennett Clark behind the wheel of the Clydesdale Chevrolet out of Canton, Georgia, Powder Springs, Georgia area, against Gary Porter's Carolina Crusher from Wadesboro, North Carolina. Well, Porter lines up in the lane that he wants to add quicker qualifying time. That'll give him lane choice. However, Bennett Clark is one of these guys who's waiting for him to blossom, and it could be on this run. Clark can definitely lay one down for it, but he doesn't do it consistently. Crusher knows it. He knows he can't cut him any flag. Let's see what's going to happen. Clark cut a good line on him. Look at this. Oh, barely. Crusher barely came back on him, Scott. It was a good start by Bennett Clark, but Gary Porter gets the victory in the Carolina Crusher. We're going to watch it one more time as Gary Porter on the left of your screen actually left the starting line a little behind, but picked up the victory, crushing the cars. Porter wins it. He's with Army right now. Talk about the next round. The truck looking okay. Everything ready to come back and do battle with these guys? I think so. The truck looks okay. I don't know who I'll be drawing the next round, but uh, I want to try to, you know, to push the truck as hard as I can to take a win. So help, uh, hopefully I can win the points race this year. Tell you what, when you sit out at this table in Memphis, Tennessee, there is no such thing as an easy draw this weekend, is there? It is. All the new trucks out and the design changes, competition is getting very tough. He'll be drawing the winner of this race, Dave Wysorek's nightlife against the Equalizer Chevrolet, the defending world champions, David Morris and Jerry Cook's truck out of Springfield, Tennessee. God, I told you last year, if there's such thing as bad luck in the draw, old Dave Wysorek always seems to wind up drawing one of the bad boys in the first round. Now, this is a strong truck, but he's constantly drawing somebody that's really tough and quick qualifying. The equalizer looked good coming off that big win a week ago right here on Duck Track. David Morris lays down a shot to put away Dave Wysork in nightlife. They're coming into your living room on Duck Track. Morris and his crew, they're tweaking that truck. They're ready to go after Bigfoot. They may get a shot later. Here's Army with David Morris. Well, David, being from Tennessee, this is a partial crowd, and believe me, they are flat pulling for you. 
Well, that's good. I'm glad the crowd's all excited. Uh, I hope I can do a, a great show for them tonight. Well, the, uh, the the run right there looked a little bit out of shape. The truck didn't stay as smooth or as level as the other trucks have been running. What's causing that? Well, that time when I came over the hill, I wasn't I wasn't straight when I went to hit the set of cars. I had got turned somehow, and I was having to fight a little bit to get it back straight, but I couldn't slow up with the I had to win, so I'm going to try to correct that problem on the next race. It's kind of like coming off the high dive. Once your cozies leave that board, you got to just go on through with it. you got to keep going with it. That completes the first round of racing on the CNC Monster Truck Challenge. Next, the 1988 National Modified Tractor Champion takes to the track in Atlanta, Georgia. In the Omni, Atlanta, Georgia, with the TNT All-American Pulling Series. Hooking to the sled is 1988 TNT points champion, Pat Friel, and the Dollar Devil. Now the Kentuckian hooking up. This tractor has been sold as he comes out to take a run here. Yeah, the tractor's been sold overseas. Listen to this tractor. distance. Now, as the test puller, Pat Friels will have the option of dropping and coming back later. I want you to watch his right hand. When he dials the horsepower in, the front end of the tractor comes up. That's an indication the weight is not right. Friels more than likely will want to come back. Son. Also, the hunter weight, uh, hunter balance up, give it another shot. You know, we're taking a chance, but I feel like that's what we need to do. So, indeed, we'll see Pat Friels, Dollar Devil, again later. Here's the reigning champion of the TNT Big Tractors, Mission Impossible, Tim Engler out of Princeton, Indiana. You know, he's been very instrumental in the development of this sport. He's getting over into a new sport. He's starting to get involved with building outlaw sprint cars. But right now, he's been in the tubes on these multi-engine tractors. He made one big change this year. He switched over to an all Chevrolet engine combination, Scott. He raises a hand, that's the indication he will not move until he's told to. That's a safety factor. Reaches down, left hand puts it in gear. Oh, he's got a problem. He's pulling away from the sled. We'll check and find out exactly what the problem is. Apparently they couldn't get one engine to fire army, so Tim's going to get out and take a look. And that means we'll move on to John Carlton and the Virginia Farmer. Very popular puller out of Little Plymouth, Virginia. Engler will be coming back, by the way. Yeah, we're checking, trying to find out the word we get is Engler is having engine problems. That'll bring Carlton out, like you say. Now, John Carlton is really a goer on these indoor tracks. He also relies on the Chevrolet engines. Now, he runs the cast iron block Chevrolet, where Engler was running the aluminum block Chevrolet. Let's see what's going to happen. Again, you notice the hands going up. That's what happens when they hook the sled. Left hand on the steering wheel, right hand on the throttle. Hot time in hot Atlanta right now. for John Carlton and the Virginia Farmer. Just 154.40 with some damage to at least one engine. Pat Friels now comes back in the Dollar Devil. Friels again with the tractor being sold, pulling out of Kentucky. 1988 National Champion on the 1990 All-American Pulling Series for TNT. That's Island, Kentucky, Nate. Again, with a unique sound. You wonder how something like that can run and sound so unique. But once you leave the starting line in this sport, Carlton just proved to us, you got to go. He lost an engine about the 50-foot mark. No excuses. When you leave, you got to go all the way. Now, Friels is our just four. He elected to come back. This one out. A lot of heat in the engine. That's where the white seat comes in the bottom. A little bit better weight transfer now. Oh, good run. Good. Oh, he's out of here. Full Look at this. Full for the Dollar Devil and Pat Friels out of Island, Kentucky. Definitely a smart decision to drop, rehook, and come back. God, he moves some weight around that tractor. Look how low the front end stands. Let's go find out exactly what Pat did to the tractor. Army's got him right now. 
a few minutes ago, Pat Frills made a run. A lot of people think he made a mistake. That was, he said, I'm turning it down and coming back. Nobody thought the track was going to get better, but wow, what a run, Pat. Yeah, Army, we felt the first run was considerably light. We could feel the tractor unload and come down the track. Front end would get behind it, and we'd lose draw bar. The tractor would unhook, and he'd come back and hook. I felt the 100 pounds on the front would settle the tractor down and just five it did. What about the possibility of coming back? You may have to run three times tonight. You ran one, turned it down, you came back, you run, made a full pull. Anybody else makes a full pull, you've got to come back and go that third time. Yes, Army, that's right. We'll go out and look things over. Right now, it's looking like we'll probably come back. I'm sure there's going to be some tractors getting out. Awful good equipment here. TNT has got a hell of a bunch running with them right now. One that definitely falls into that category is John Powell of Powell Bulling. Hey, here's a guy running for the World Championship in the TNT All-American Bulling Series that's looking for a major sponsor. Boy, here's a great place to make it put their name on a tractor. Yeah, I tell you, Chrysler Corporation, this is one of your boys. He relies on your awesome Hemi horsepower. Man, does he make it work. Look at this. 140 miles. to join Pat Friels in what would be a pull-off, 181.77 on a 190-foot track. Here comes Tim Engler back in Mission Impossible, and now all the engines are apparently running, so Engler will try for a full pull. Okay, Engler just burst the throttle right there. That's his trademark, right here on the throttle. He'll roll, wrap the throttle, on, off, back again. Look at this. You talk about an upset. Engler will not make a full pull. A huge surprise as Tim Engler's Mission Impossible, despite a lot more horsepower than Pat Friel's Dollar Devil, still not able to take it out. And Mission Impossible and Tim Engler beaten in Atlanta's Omni. Pat Friel still sitting on top. Oh, the handwriting's on the wall. The track seems to be the problem. Tim Engler, everybody's starting on the right and coming to the left. It looks like you're doing everything you can to go straight, but they just power left on you. Yeah, I think the track must have a groove in it, Army, and I think uh, the track is extremely fine and breaking up. As you can see, we're not staying up on top of the track. Probably a tractor with a lot of tar speed is not going to do real well on this until we figure out how to slow the gear down. If you had to go back right now and hook again, what would you do different? Probably shut one motor off. Actually kill horsepower. Yes, definitely. We're turning the tires too fast. I was trying to let out it and get it to come on top of the track. The tractor just won't do that. The track is too soft. Can you believe that? Angler almost ran previously without one engine. Now he says that would have been the best strategy. Less horsepower. That's Fred Freeman, a guy with less horsepower, but a lot of smarts. He's moving weight around right now, getting ready to pull. But up next, a monster truck race you cannot miss. The two most popular trucks in the world, Grave Digger and Bigfoot. <laughs> Track. Back with the superstars of monster truck racing. Here's the way the quarterfinals match up. Look at this one. Big foot against Grave Digger. Then we'll see the Buffalo Tremor coming back to take on Scott Stevens and that King Crush GMC. That ought to be a tight matchup. Keep your eye on that one. In the bottom half of the bracket, Austin Kong defeated Whiskey Business in the first round. You saw him hauled off, but we expect him back to take on USA 1. And then the final matchup, a rematch of last year's number one and two truck. Carolina Crusher squares off with the equalizer. It's not the Monsters match final, but this is one of the matchups that hopes to see in Memphis, Tennessee. Bigfoot and Grave Digger. Scott, these have to be the two most popular trucks in the world. Who's going to win in Memphis? Bigfoot. Whoa, look at the Grave Digger. Wow, he almost took a piece out of the Bigfoot at the end of the run. But Andy Brass gets the victory. Dennis Anderson going all out with the Grave Digger, but a little bit too much Bigfoot at this point. Look at the end of the run. It looks like Anderson was headed right for him. But he gets it stopped before there's a collision between these two at the end of the track in Memphis, Tennessee, but not much room there at all. Andy Brass is out. Army's going to talk to him. Well, ladies and gentlemen, when you're on top, there's only one place to go, buddy, and everybody's trying to knock you down this thing any way they can. Anderson gave you a handful right there. That's right. Dennis did give a good run, but Ford Bigfoot, you know, we've been after the Chevy Digger for a long time and finally come around to where we got him. Well, the, the 
vehicle seemed to go decently well for you, but Anderson had his hands full. He was all over the place. Are you aware of him being in trouble on a run like that, or are you too busy just driving your truck? Well, I kind of caught Dennis in the, in the side mirror there once, and I seen him coming over. I knew he was going to hit the hill hard. He, Dennis's truck, he's known to be squirrely, so I he, you know, figuring he'd hit the hill hard, he's going to be out of control a little bit. We just tried to run a straight race. I seen him, and also I tried to hang off to my left side a little bit to keep him hitting me. Now Army's going to talk with Scott Stevens in the cab of King Front. talk to these drivers as they race. It gets us just a little bit closer to understanding what's going on in the driver's head as he prepares to hurdle down the track in midair at a high speed at another man's wall, as Army would say. Scott Stevens, what's going through your mind right now? You're sitting ready to go and everything. He's kind of coming in the light flow. You nervous or what, what, what exactly are you thinking about? King Crunch getting ready to battle John Kwasniewski and the Buffalo Tremor side by side in Memphis, Tennessee. The winner will move into the semifinals and the round of four. We're going to watch the race and then Army's going to pick up talking to Scott Stevens once again. Get okay. Well, the chassis just separated and it rolled back on you or what? Yeah, the front leaf spring just broke and when it broke, it just let the front end roll out from under the truck. This means we're going to be seeing a new King Crunch truck or what? Oh, it's not hurt that bad. It, you know, might be running them, you know, next week for sure. And You're the guy that said they're going to be building like sprint cars. Going to tear them up, put them all right back together. Is that the philosophy you're using on this? The bad thing about it, we got all our springs just freshened up for Houston in two weeks and they're at home, so we'll have to have them flown up here for you know, the next race. But we'll be all right. King Crunch won it, but he'll not be able to advance on this day in Memphis, Tennessee. You can see the damage sustained on the rough run for Scott Stevens and King Crunch. Well, it's going to be time now for our crunch of the week, which is two more looks at this unbelievable run by Scott Stevens. It's crunch of the week time. Hold on to your seats for the amazing crunch of the week, brought to you by Micro Machines, the number one colossally collectible vehicles in the world. If it doesn't say Micro Machines, it's not the real thing. Army, we're going to go back to this run on the crunch of the week. Take us through it. What happened? The truck came up. The problem will be on the right side. When it lands, it tucks under right here. Okay? That's what tucks it under and locked everything up. And the five people from Race and Radio gave us a whole new perspective of that accident, didn't they, Scott? Really did. We'll watch it now as they come right at you. And you're going to see on this replay, I think, Army, the skill of the drivers, because these guys really got close together. And what a mess that would have been if they collided. You know, this camera angle right here, two runs in a row. Look how close this is. A moment ago, it was a grave digger in Bigfoot. This time, crunch in the New York kid. The crunch of the week, Scott Stevens. Our next first round matchup, a battle of big bad Chevrolets. USA 1 and Awesome Kong. Steve Wilkie drives USA 1 out of Minnesota. Steve Kane from deep in the heart of Texas, Colleen, Texas, driving the Awesome Kong machine. Motors in the back of the red truck, motors in the front of the white truck, both of them equal in horsepower. Red truck from Texas goes at next round. Awesome Kong 
with Steve King. They pulled him out of here with the front end loader a few minutes ago, but he comes back with a strong win over USA 1. Let's look at it again, Army. Both trucks came over the first hill. They negotiated the first hill awfully good. But again, there, nobody's making straight runs. This inline camera really gives you some perspective as to how much these guys are driving these rascals. The defending world champion out of the Nashville, Tennessee area, Equalizer and David Morris driving for Supreme truck builder Gary Cook against Gary Porter's Carolina Crusher. Porter really in a position of just trying to hang in there until his new truck is ready. Okay, now Porter's got a problem that the Equalizer will not have. Equalizer does not have a windshield. Porter does have a windshield. He came from outside where it's cool inside. He may not be able to see as good as the Equalizer truck. And believe me, when you're running at another guy's wall, a 13,000-pound truck, you want to be able to see. Yeah, see the windshield? He can't see out very good at all, Scott. Here we go. It's Gary Porter's Carolina Crusher, David Morris, and the Equalizer. Watch for the green light. That was a good monster truck race. I don't know who won it, but it was a good right equalizer to work with yet. David Morris by just about a half a wheel length. So Gary Porter, knowing his truck outdated, is hanging in there, but it's not quite enough to knock off the defending world champion. One more time, the win to David Morris and the equalizer still go to the semifinal. But Army, you've got to be impressed with the Gary Porter Carolina Crusher operation hanging in there with the equalizer. When he gets that new truck ready, he'll again be ready to challenge for victory. Well, 1990, it's going to be a war. Speaking of war, the war wagon, the man in the black hat, Paul Norman, coming up as we go back to the modified tractor. Tough tracks with the TNT All-American Pulling Series. We're halfway through the 7,200-pound modified tractor class in Atlanta, Georgia. Pat Friel leads the way in the Dollar Devil with that full pull. Powell pulling, John Powell, Tim Engler's Vision Impossible. Right now, the top three. Dave Walsh brings out the Irish Challenger as we get ready to watch him pull. Let's go to Chris Chapman, who's with Dan Walsh, about the setup of the tractor. Standing heavy conversation with Dave. What's going on? Well, we figure on this track it's loose. We're going to have to pick the front end up about two and a half feet and carry it. So we're going to run it lighter than normal. Do you feel pretty confident? I think so. How about you? I'm hoping I do. I think you'll do all right. I think you'll go right now. The Walsh Brothers out of Mawson, Wisconsin. The Irish Challengers, of course. Dan pulls in the two-wheel drive. Truck class, Dave in the 7,200-pound modified tractor class. He is hooked, and now he'll take the slack out and then get ready to pull the weight, the sled, up the track in Atlanta. Your current leader, Frill, did exactly opposite of what Walsh is doing. Frill started on the opposite side of the track and came across. He started right, went left. Walsh is starting left, going right. wrong there something a miss on the irish challenger of dave walsh only 141 feet bad luck for the irish challenger that's not the word we get a coil wire came off that's what killed the engine fred freeman now out in the mean mistreater and just a moment ago chris chapman asked fred about his preparation for this fred, poll i've been moving some weight around let some air out of my tires after watching all these other guys pull well, uh, Pat Friel's a tractor, mine are almost identical, and I got mine set up just about exactly like his right at present time. Indeed, there are a lot of similarities between the mean Miss Freeder and the Dollar Devil. You know, Fred Freeman, we call him Ready Freddy, but you know the racers call him Freeman Freeman, because he makes these iron block Chevrolets really get out there and holler. Now, he talked about his tractor being identical to Friel's, Watch that right hand. If he comes down and sucker punches you with it, that means he's going to make a good run. Right hand is a telltale sign of this guy. Keep your eyes on Fred Freeman, the mean mistreater out of Wadeville, Indiana. There it is. Oh, not quite. About a half a foot short. One. 9.49, so Fred Freeman a solid second, but is unable to force the pull off. Here comes Mike Piper and just add dirt. Chris Chapman standing by with a puller. Many consider to be among the elite indoors. Paul Norman. What do you think about Pat 
We're going to be having the championship rematch from one week ago between Bigfoot and Equalizer. And, of course, Equalizer got that win last week here on Tough Track. David Morris looking so tough, picking up right where he left off in 1989, dominating in 90, but Bigfoot is next. All right, Dave, you're going to the finals, baby. This is just nothing but an old-time street fight. You pull the gloves off, you go after each other, no love lost. And I know one thing for sure, he doesn't want you to beat him two weeks in a row, and he told me anything he's got to do to beat you, that's what he's going to do. Well, I'm going to make him push his truck to the limit. Uh, cause I'm going to be the equalizer. I'm going to run it just as hard as it'll go. So maybe I can hang in there and take a win. Coming up next, a rematch of last week's Monster Smash. The new Bigfoot seeks revenge against the world champion. This is it, the Monster Smash. Undoubtedly the two quickest monster trucks in the world. Bigfoot takes on Equalizer, trying to even the score. Equalizer comes out. Watch for the light to go green and the front tires to move. He was sitting there. That young man cut a good light, in my opinion. Look at this. Again, green light, and he moves. There's green. Now he moves. Wow. How close can you get? And the word from the TNT official is that Equalizer is disqualified for jumping the start. Watch it again. God, they missed it. Boy. I'm going to tell you, yeah. that is close. And we've got, we've got the luxury of the replay they didn't they missed that rascal army's got both drivers andy any wins a good win congratulations to you on this one the general tire bigfoot really looked good tonight yes it did the truck was running real well tonight you know like i say the win was a good win i think dave got it off uh, jumped the light a little bit and was red lighted but i figured we only might as well push it they might not catch it so we went for it anyway when you're as quick as you are you know these guys are going to be doing that right that's right you know everybody's coming up against us now they're really they're helping to push their trucks hard We've been running pretty hard with the truck. It's, I don't think the truck's up to full capacity yet, but it's, it's running well. Okay, we're going to see you in just a minute. Right now, I need to get David in here. David, congratulations on a job well done. These people were really, really behind you, and really, I think you did the only thing you could do, babe. You just went for his throat. Yeah, I got a little over anxious up there, they said, on the line, and said I was, uh, left a little bit too quick, but I was ready to go, and <laughs> I wasn't ready to wait. If he left too quick, we're dealing in hundreds of seconds. But nonetheless, that's the call, and Bigfoot gets the win over Equalizer on a disqualification. Doesn't hurt Equalizer much in the point standing, so he expands his lead over King Punch, Grave Digger. USA won an outlaw still, rounding out the top five. Then as we go down to restore automotive product point standings, it's Nightlife, Tremor, Mopar, Awesome Kong, and Thunder Chicken, now tied for the number nine spot. One more time, you can see as he rolls off of there, you may say he jumped the start. Some don't believe it. However, the TNT officials said, yep, just by a little bit. That's all that matters. And Equalizer is DQ'd. Bigfoot gets the win. Next week, Bigfoot and Equalizer back in Memphis to break their one-to-one -one tie. We'll have it for you on Tough Track. For Chris Chapman and Army Armstrong, I'm Scott Douglas. you got to be here to see it next week on Tough Track.